Rosa Roaming here and welcome back to Duggerman. We're here again on the same loading screen. We're gonna go with him. What is this? Agree to the lap pillow. We're gonna make sure to not go outside on a walk. Wait! Why am I still here? The comment was certainly scary. It's worse than it chill down my spine. They're... They're so very ambiguous. Something is wrong with this boy. How could an ordinary child have such a dark, pierce that those are blue eyes, bro? <laughs> Penetrating gaze. Eyes that seem to crawl beneath my skin, searching for answers. Uh, see ya. I begin to cautiously step away, but the young man simply watches me with a suspicious, polite smile on his face. As soon as I'm safe distance away, I break into a run. I hope I can find Cass quickly. How the heck did I lose sight of him? Scratch that. How the heck did he lose sight of me? Uh, even though I said I'm fine, I'm not quite sure that's true. Something about that boy has me still feeling uneasy, but maybe I'm just imagining things. I've been having a hard time trusting my own feelings these days, too. But I don't want Cass to think I'm being a worry wart. I continue jabbering on and attempt to drown out the doubts I'm having, keeping quiet about that dubious schoolboy. Fucking tell him the fuck! Cass just listens intently, then gently takes my hand. Let's refuse. Um, so he's saying I'm dead weight. Well, I thank you, Cass. It's very nice of you. No, I'm sorry. I had other plans. But Cass responds to my refusal by merely placing his other arm behind his back and to his picture of his amazing dispassionate. I sit down on the couch and try to watch TV. There are no books I've already... Okay. Ask him how I got your number? Without thinking, I start typing. How did you get my number? And his reply since it's chilled down my spine. That's not important. What is important is the fact that we have... We now have a connection. Damn, he sounds like a little psychopath. My fingers type the message down on their own. Please don't write again, you're scaring me. Uh, don't bother, Castle. Maybe? Thinking about it again, it's clear that this is the reaction of a jealous child. We're on a mission here. Cass and Vince I don't have time to deal with my problems. Hopefully sooner or later, this annoying schoolboy will get tired of sending me stupid texts. Still, I'm probably gonna die again. <laughs> Even though I've decided that none of it matters, a growing sense of dread has slowly come over me today. The text messages have stopped, but this oppressive malice continues to linger and is getting stronger. We're walking around the city and munching on some snacks, but everything around me feels off, like the world has lost all meaning. We're gonna die. I don't- Why is the sound getting worse? Amid the darkness, a voice wakes me from my slumber. I don't like being ignored. <laughs> Grandma was sleeping- I'm dying! <laughs> Grandma was sleeping seems like I've been roused by the sounds of crickets. <laughs> it's not long before I can make out a head of gleaming white hair and darkness than a pale face. Vincent? You just like me, aren't you? The blonde boy. If you are, it's very rude, you know, snooping around my city. My nighttime visitors unceremoniously grabs me by the ankle and drags me off the sofa, causing me to hit my head against the floor, which clears my mind enough for me to let out a scream and being begin kicking at him. But my struggle is short lived, running smiles at me sweetly. I feel like he's already killed the boys. Keep it up, then I'll break your leg. Oh, you're so cute, but why are you so fucking fucked? Keep it up. <laughs> Break your leg to prove his intent. He, he tightens his grip on my ankle and I feel a crunch and excruciating pain. Stopping, he then drags me over to the bed where Vincent and Cass are sleeping. My desperate screams have even roused them. Who should we start with? Who do you like less? The young man sits down in bed. Never gas is very easy to create. Nerve gas, never gas. What is not easy is maintaining the concentration needed to keep a person immobile while also not killing them. Well, am I doing this, you may ask? Well, let's play a little game, shall we? I ask you a question, you answer. If you're smart, I might not rip off your pretty friend Slim's hair. But if you're quick with your answers, there's a chance they may recover from their capitation. Just so you know the stakes. Anyway, who to start with? If you don't want to help, I'll just have to choose myself. R Rodian does exactly as he says, and soon he grims and his grim intentions are made crystal clear. I went so badly for this horror to end, so I give him everything he asks of me. When I'm finished, Rodian polite smiles. Well, honey, you're certainly a smart girl. Thank you for telling me everything you know. He pats me on the cheek, but all I can do is stare at his blood red lips. Unfortunately, it's not enough. I need to know who in your organization has what abilities. Knowledge is power, right? I don't mean to upset you, but I don't think I can let you go. And since your friends are resilient, one finger may not be enough for me. So you might want to scream louder and more pitifully. Maybe then your friends will come apart faster and their deaths will be less, little less painful. As he speaks a horrifying words, the polite, intelligent expression of Rodian's face never changes. Ah, so that's bad ending 
10. <laughs> I'm just getting all the bad endings. Uh, I'm just getting all the bad endings. Since this episode is quite short. I know I, I said that in like episode uh, 30. When we got bad ending number 9. That was quite short too. But I'm getting a little frustrated. So I'm gonna just fuse these, ep these endings together. Okay. Go. Refuse? What if we refuse? I'm getting way too close to the castle and it's bothering me. No thanks. He studies me silently and then hangs up his jacket before crossing his arms and quickly falling asleep. Do they normally sleep on missions? Or is this only considered one after we arrive at our destination? So here I am, awake and alone between two sleeping men. But as I watch them, I notice something strange. Even sleeping, they're both aesthetically pleasing. No open mouths, no sniffles, no stupid expressions. Why am I sitting here admiring them? I close my eyes and soon lull to sleep by the train's rhythmic rocking. Don't know that made much of a difference. Uh, I was so uncomfortable that I didn't sleep very well. Why didn't that asshole make us a door? Okay. Continue. It's clearly in the mood for conversation. Hmm. I decided to be friendly and relax a little. At least I still look young on the outside. Well, you can't be much older than me. The boy smiles sweetly, then seemingly embarrassed, glances away shyly. At his age, it doesn't take much for one to get embarrassed. I'm Rodian. Very nice to meet you. Quickly shining his shyness, he suddenly introduces himself. Fine, I'll play along and introduce to myself as well will be rude. I'm Michiko. To a closer look at Rodian, he appears to be regularly bullied. He catches my gaze and timidly hides his hand behind his back, concealing his bruised knuckles. That's not him being bullied. That's him fighting people. I'm sure his unusual name and even more remarkable appearance has done him no favors. Recognizing this has me feeling sympathetic more than anything else. I know all too well what schoolyard bullying entails, and it's much, a much bigger issue than it seems. And yes, I only just arrived in town yesterday. I can't imagine what a lady like yourself is doing in this dump. Hey, didn't we already decide I look young? What's up with calling me a lady? Please forgive me. Um, I mean, sorry. It's fine. He seems a little confused. Um, this may sound strange, but I'm here by accident. That makes sense. The only way to get here is by accident. Was that a hint of sarcasm in his voice? Once again, a surge of sympathy floods through me. It's not like I could tell him the purpose of my visit. Fortunately, he doesn't seem to be interested in it. Give him my phone number so it won't be creepy. An extremely adventurous thought occurs to me. Look, I need to ramp up. Can we exchange phone numbers? I don't know anyone here, and it'd be nice if you could squire, squire me about town sometime. If you don't mind, of course. Squire you about town, sounds chivalrous. Well, there's only like three pine trees here, but I'd be more than happy to tell you all about them. Once again, a running flesh is bright red with tints embarrassment. Maybe if we be nice to him, things will be a little different. He then pulls out his phone and waits my number. Rattling off the digits, I promptly wave him goodbye. I hope we meet again. Of course we will. Running waits after me, and I run down the path hoping to find Cass again. Maybe my decision to give him my phone number was strange, but there was so much loneliness in his eyes. And the loneliness I've felt before. I had always wished that someone would listen to me and attempt to understand my feelings, but in the end I was left to deal with them on my own. I know how it feels. The least I can do is try to help others with similar feelings and struggles. Okay. Well, nothing did happen. I only gave my phone number to the first person I met. Ashamed to think about it, I decided to keep quiet about my new acquaintance. Uh, I could be jabbering on in an attempt to drown out my doubts I'm having over talking to Rodian. Cass just listens intently. Is it, is it here? Is it here that I'm fucking up? Have you lost your damn mind? What does he make me for? Some weak little woman who's only used his dead weight? Cass, are you crazy? Do you have any idea what you're asking me to do? I didn't mean to offend. I'm sorry if you took it the wrong way. The idiot doesn't even change his expression. I walk out of the balcony and slam the door shut behind me. Of course, Castle doesn't even think to run after me. Glaring through the glasses, a glass of the screen door, I can see him doing one-handed push-ups. Stupid jock, only ever thinking about one thing. But it's freezing out here, so I quickly return to the room pretend to, and try to pretend Castle is nothing more than a piece of furniture. I sit down on the couch and try to watch TV. It's Rodian. Hmm. Reply? There's no reason to ignore the polite and sweet young man. This is Michiko. Oh, I'm so glad. I was worried you didn't give me your actual phone number. You're the only guy in this city. I couldn't waste the chance to learn the great story of the Three Pines. Uh, why don't put you? Why, why don't I put it in your salad then, idiot? Your face is bad for my appetite too. It's so sour that it's, it's make it makes all the food taste sour. Vincent flusters and starts to say something, but Cass clamps his hand over his mouth while glancing sadly at me. It seems to upset him whenever Vincent and I fight. I stick my tongue out at the purple-eyed brute who makes an eloquent gesture with his fingers as if slicing his throat. Cute. 
In a way, I don't know how Cass has the patience to be partners with such an obnoxious jerk. Taking advantage of the fact that he isn't paying any attention to me and therefore can't comment, I begin corresponding with Rodian. He doesn't answer very quickly, however, so it's a bit boring. I had already read all the magazines. Okay. Return the book. Is Vincent still in town telling me what to do? Absolutely not. I hand the book back to him and he chuckles. Well, it's up to you. Just turn the TV down. It's annoying. When Cast comes in later that evening, the scene is, isn't exactly idyllic. I'm lying on the couch soaking the TV rays while Vincent is eating apples in his chair. Feeling anxious before bed, I begin texting Rodian again. Scrolling through our, text, our messages, I can't help but muse how, over how cute he is. Ugh. I bid him a good night and when I read his, resp his response, I feel a bit better. It's only then I'm able to sleep. I don't know what this is. Maybe this is right? It's been a few days. The guys have been taking turns surveying, surveilling our quantity while I've been casually corresponding with Rodian before during the daytime and quite actively at night. This is not. This is not a good. This is not a good end. <laughs> Communication with him is pleasant. Is a pleasant secret for me. For me. From me. For me. He's proven to be an interesting and one might say unusual individual. He's interested in science and has been invented something himself. He practices Taekwondo and is preparing hard to enter one of the most prestigious universities in the country. The young man knows what he wants and is distinguished by his incredible intelligence. Rodan generously shares all the positive things in his life with me, yet conspicuously never speaks about his friends, family, or school. Comparing the facts and some little things that have popped up in my mind, communications with him, I have summarized that Rodan started school much later than usual, most likely due to some serious health problems. These issues have only exacerbated Exerbated his already painful fragility, which then led to bullying at school. Rodian's attempts to fight back have obviously been unsuccessful, especially since his timidness and modesty doesn't lend well to the confrontation. It's clear he receives more abuse than he gives, but I don't see any anger in him. Just an understanding of what is happening and a desire to leave his hometown. When we first met, it seemed he needed someone who would listen to him, but after talking to him for a while now, it's clear he's the strong kid who doesn't need anyone's support. Although, after talking to him for a few days now, I can't really call him a schoolboy anymore. Rodin is a beautiful person, and in a way, I find myself guiltily regretting that my heart is already spoken for. Speaking of my heart, both Cass and Vincent have been taking care of me, but I still feel strange interacting with them. St still feel strange interacting with them. At least they're trying to make me make my trip a more enjoyable experience. Cass is super attentive as usual and is always lending me his hand and in and out of vehicles, opening doors, pulling out chairs, and doing all sorts of gentlemanly things. But I suspect it may just be the result of good parenting. One night, Cass strikes up a, co strikes up a conversation. I think we'll be done tomorrow or the day after. Alright. <laughs> I feel like we're getting too close to the finish line. And I'm afraid he's just gonna die. I wish I was privy to, uh, to what we are doing here, but remember how sharply he replied to my previous inquiries and decided to keep quiet. Well, the mission is almost over. I'm not one inch closer to being a trained Quanzi. I'd hope that after watching Quanzi's in action, that I would have some idea of how to manifest my own abilities, even just a hint of them. Is this my lot in life to forever be a useless bystander? After hearing the news, I text Rodian. I'm leaving soon. We never took a walk. Shame. Sorry. Can we meet? I like to say goodbye in person. No, I'm gonna die. I'd be carefully consider a waiting message to write back that I won't have time to meet. I think Rodin might have some illusions about me, and it would be too painful to communicate with him, to look him straight in the, his innocent eyes, and know, uh, eyes and know that he likes me, yet I pretend like I don't notice. I'm so sorry. His answer is brief. I hope he won't be too upset. Why are you saying sorry? He's gonna come up here and kill all of them! That evening, Cass leaves me alone with Vincent again. He was beginning to act extremely odd. Uh, mm, we're gonna pick back up on that same point after we get this bad ending, alright? At a certain point, he drops his book and stares off into space. I'm so creeped out by it that I, me I immediately check to see if he's alright. Are you okay? Vincent slowly turns his head towards me and his glassy eyes gain recognition. He then grabs me and embraces me tightly. His entire body is trembling and his voice sounds broken. It's awful, damn it. Huh? I normally wouldn't have hugged him back, but something strange is going on. I try to gently stroke his back and visit response are pressing me harder against him until the air in my lungs have been squeezed out, causing me to squeak, he's mumbling frantically. Why did I bring you here? Damn quandies, damn it all. Why are you so attracted to psychos? Vincent, what's wrong? How can they help you? I labor to get the words out as Vincent's tight embrace continues to smother me. No, I'll save you, do you hear me? I won't let him do this. Vincent struggles to continue, to you. I'll do anything, you know that, right? Am I hearing two split voices or what's going on here? 
His body stiffens, making it impossible for him to pull away, but that's, that is only half the problem. Something inexplicable is happening to me right now, too. My head is roaring, my throat is, de is a desert. Damn it, this can't be happening. What's wrong? The quantum seems much stronger than we thought. What? Is Cass fighting him now? Yes. I, I go cold. If, if Cass is fighting him, does that mean he wants to kill him? Yes. But he's a Quanzi. He's not a Hex. There are Quanzis who are more dangerous than Altids. Which is fucking weird. My, I mean, it makes sense, though. But why is the Quanzi killing other Quanzis? My d breath comes hard from my lips. But I'm a Quanzi and you follow me. Is that... Were you ready to kill me, too? Vincent's glove finger gripped the back of my head. Don't be stupid. You weren't dangerous. But if I were, would you have been willing to kill a woman? I've never seen Vincent so angry. His face con is contorted with rage, lips quivering. Don't say that! I feel his cheek against my face. Just shut up! Okay. His body continues to tremble. Or is that the floor shaking? How did I not recognize it? This very same feeling. The altars are coming. Bad timing! This is a shit show! <laughs> I know I'm over time, but I want to just finish up this ending so that I have just two endings for you guys in one video. I don't even have the time to be afraid. Easily catching up, easily catching me up in his arms, Vincent leaps shoulder first through the air as he slices his way through the tension-filled atmosphere. His feet are already sliding across the water. At timing, he repeats angrily, I can't save you alone and Cass can't find it on his own, so we'll have to resort to this. Vincent leaps into the air so forcefully that for a second it feels like we're flying. Holding onto me with just one hand, he tears off the usual clasp on his collar. I can't help but cling to Vincent's neck as I watch white hands rise up from the spot we had just been standing. Hex. I feel sick. Hold on, focus. Vincent shouts almost directly into my poor ear and holds out a cufflink. Put it tight in your hand and don't let go. Call Basti, ask for help, and agree to whatever he says. What? Just hurry, you fool! Vincent jumps again and while hissing in pain, I notice a trickle of blood run down from his mouth. No matter how crazy Vincent's order sounds, I don't have time to worry about it, so I grip the clasp of cold metal and timidly whisper to myself, Basti? Yes? I hear Basti's distinctly gentle voice right in my head. We need help. We're being attacked by the Hex. Okay. May I have permission to use your body? But what does he mean, use my body? But then I remember what Vincent said about regretting what it, to what he says. Yes. Then I feel something cold and heavy slip through my ear and burrow deep into my brain. Hello, my hopeless one. Fuck you, Ayn! <laughs> Ayn. At the same time, my body stops corresponding to me. My fingers snap, and Vincent and I are now in some kind of cube that's hovering midair. Ayn will protect you. I'll be back soon. And no, I, I don't envy you. Vincent vanishes in a puff of smoke. I'm now alone with the heaviness that has settled inside my brain. My fingers continue to snap as more and more bears materialize around me. Hanging suspended here in the sky, watching the white figures multiply so quickly that their bodies begin forming something that resembles a tower. The barriers all make sense now. You shouldn't be looking at this. I hear Ayn's voice again that everything goes black. Interesting, the altars are being extremely bold, yet careless. There's a faint crunching sound I would have screamed out in fear if only I could. My mouth, like the rest of my body, feels the vein in me. Your body won't last long. Prepare yourself. 7 minutes and 48 seconds. Then I shall take you to Vincent Castle. They should be safe by then. Oh, what kind of ending is this? My body is shaking madly. Right now, I'm blocking your nerve receptors. After I release your body, you'll be in a very bad way. You should mentally prepare yourself for this. Ian's voice is not at all soothing, and the seconds painfully pass by and are filled with static and silence. Ready yourself. I feel a strange tug before my feet hit the floor hard, then I fall to my hands and knees. A myriad of sensations overwhelm me. My head feels like it's about to burst as every muscle in my body is spasms. It refuses to respond. My heart pounds frantically in an attempt to endure the superhuman overload. But once my eyes adjust to the dimness, I cover my mouth to stop myself from screaming. You a snake? What the fuck? The room I now find myself is find myself in is covered in blood. Walls, floor, ceiling. Chunks of flesh are scattered about. Some of it looks human, but not all of it. Then something large and dark catches my eyes and moves in the distance. It kind of looks pretty cool. But I'm sure this is terrifying as shit. I don't want to look at it, but I can't stop myself. When my eyes finally meet the monsters, I realize it's Rodian. That's Rodian? That's Rodian's true form? Holy shit. Oh, bad end of number 11? This is beyond crazy. <laughs> this is beyond crazy. What? So I got what? Um, I haven't been keeping up with the bad endings. I can't even read my handwriting, actually. So I got bad ending 10 and 11, I think, for this episode. Editing, you'll figure it out. <laughs> but wow! Look at all the amounts of bad endings we're getting. I really do not know how to trigger like a decent ending. I don't even know what the true ending is. Obviously, it's going to be a bittersweet, but... 
All right, well then, uh, hope you guys enjoyed both bad endings that we got in this episode today. Thank you guys for watching, stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.